Jill Kent is a retired Army Special Forces and former CIA paramilitary officer. He joins us now to react to all of this latest chaos. Hey, Joe, can you make sense of this? No, there's no sense to be made. The only lesson that we can take here is that we cannot negotiate with terrorists from a position of weakness. Going back to the Obama administration, that's been the lesson, the disastrous Bergdahl debacle that put those terrorists back in power after they got a U.S. taxpayer-funded uh, vacation to Gitmo, essentially. And then the deal that Biden failed to negotiate with the Taliban to get all of the Americans out. This just shows that the culture from the top matters. When the commander-in-chief and the unelected bureaucrats don't care about America's standing in the world and they, they view us as just another nation on the decline, this is exactly what happens. Contrast that with four years of President Trump and negotiating from a position of power. It's a night and day difference. We had the ability to get all of our people out under President Trump. He negotiated a deal that would have had us out of Afghanistan in the summer of 2020 until the permanent ruling class, the unelected bureaucrats, leaked made-up intelligence about Russian bounties that resulted in uh, the Uniparty leaving us in Afghanistan. That's exactly how we got to this point right now. They didn't want President Trump's plan to succeed, and that put us in this position of weakness, got 13 great soldiers killed, and now has Americans being held hostage with our State Department absolutely helpless. You know what's pretty amazing is we told them to have a diverse, inclusive government, and they didn't. I'm shocked they didn't listen. We said have an inclusive government. Did they not understand? Did we not have a translator? Oh, we, tra we got rid of all of them. No, excuse me, the translators we didn't get out. Uh, among the other people who in important positions is Siraj Haqqani. Who is he? A designated global terrorist by Washington who we have on a wanted list for $10 million. So we couldn't get that glossy headshot from him, so we were forced to use the wanted photo we had up. How's that going for inclusive? It's absolutely ridiculous, and that just speaks to the relationship that we've had with Pakistan. Once again, when we negotiate from a position of weakness that only lines the pockets of these corrupt governments and lobbyists in Washington, D.C., people like Siraj Haqqani can hide out on the Pakistani border, kidnap Americans, uh, run terrorism, terrorism operations, seek sanctuary with people that we're providing U.S. aid to, even when they get caught red-handed hosting bin Laden there we still continue to pour U.S. aid into them. We need a massive amount of accountability. Our government and our permanent ruling class is an absolute disgrace to all the lives that have been lost over there. That's exactly why I'm running for Congress, to bring accountability to our permanent ruling class. That's why I was honored that President Trump provided me with his endorsement to bring the America First agenda back, to put an end to all this excessive waste and all of the lives being taken by the hubris and the be the uh, hubris and lies of our permanent ruling class. Joe, the thing is, I really think we needed somewhat of a presence in the area. I did not want to give it right to the terrorists. And already, one of the people uh, infecting the new uh, Taliban government directly linked to al-Qaeda, he was the liaison between the two, uh, back which led to the 9-11 attacks. Keep in mind, too, Sue Gordon, who's the deputy director of national intelligence, said this about our future intelligence uh, operations. We have to use some non-traditional partners now to find out what's happening in the region. Jot this down. Russia, China, Iran, and Pakistan will have to be our eyes and ears in the region. Can you please tell me what Joe Biden was doing for the last 50 years that he brought us this mess? No, that's an absolute lie. We have the ability to, to collect intelligence without having a permanent military presence there, without propping up these made-up governments. The problem is limited intelligence operations, limited counterterrorism operations, they don't provide income for the military-industrial complex. So you're hearing all these folks that are the so-called adults in the room, the so-called experts in Washington, D.C., saying, well, now we just have to accept the fact that we're a power in decline and we're going to rely on all these other powers in decline. And this is just the way that it is, unless we go back in. So that's the problem right, right now that we have. We're, pre we're presented with this binary choice. It's absolutely false. That's exactly why I'm running for Congress to change this and to bring some accountability to Washington, D.C. Uh, the good news is, Joan, I think you agree. We have good war fighters. Our commanders do not live up to what our war fighters deserve, and they're ready to go. And we got the best R&D people on the planet, so we don't have far to go. We just need better leadership. Joe Kent, best of luck in your race. That's exactly right. Thank you very much.